way different than somebody that lost a parent. But if you're the one that lost a parent, all you know is that pain. And that pain is just as real as any other pain that you've ever experienced or worse. So um, be courteous of that. And uh, there's never any right words what to say to people. Just say you're sorry. Just show them your support, your love. If you need me, you know where I am, that type of thing. So um, I'm, I'm looking forward tonight to uh, see Suzanne work. And uh, I'm sure she'll uh, get to many of you. I don't know. Um, one thing I want to know on the count of three, can you all do ah for me, OK? So one, two, three. Ah. Okay. Uh, we'll do it again. And just like louder and more collective, OK? One, two, three. Ah. So you just all let out your disappointment, because not everybody will get ready tonight. <laughs> and today I won't want to hear about it. I sure don't want to hear about it. We'll get pulled to where we need to go, Suzanne's on for two and a half hours or thereabouts, and hopefully she gets lots of people, and I'll see who I can get to here. Who's had, uh, who's seen me before, or uh, private or in public? So a few of you, and you still come back. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. The last time I was here in Grace Tipton Hall was uh, two years ago for a, a fundraiser that uh, I headlined that night, and uh, we raised money for a local broomball team, ladies broomball team, that was going to the world later that year. The reason I'm telling you this is in, in, I have one book that I've written and published is Pennies from Heaven, but I have another book out there that has 32 authors from around the world that all wrote chapters in it, and I've written a chapter, and it mine's on page 169. And it's called Soul Shift. My chapter has to do with the event that I was here for in the Grace Tickling Hall two years ago because the last contact I had that night with a lady sitting pretty much where Diane <coughs> is sitting here in the second row, second or third row. And what I didn't know at the time is she knew I was wrapping up the evening and was getting close to the end of time. I didn't know that in her head she kept talking to her dad in the spirit saying, Dad, this is your chance. And she felt like all week he was going to come through to her. And she kept pleading with him, this is your chance, he's almost done, he's almost done. I sat here for two and a half hours patiently, where are you? And so I got pulled there, but not by her dad. I got pulled by a young female who passed from cancer. And uh, and I didn't know who I was with, because there was a, a, a big group in there. And she was hesitant to put up her hand, but there was more details that I said. And as soon as she put her hand up, and she was very reluctant, she said, I'm not sure if you're with me. Everybody says that. And that's a fair statement. You may not know for sure. But if you don't put up your hand, you miss your opportunity. And if the medium is legitimate, they're going to rule you out or they're going to define it and lock in on it. So, you know, you, you don't want to miss your opportunity. That night, her friend kind of forced her hand up. And so I, I seen it and I went to her. And I said, what do you understand about the young female? And she said it was a family friend. I don't know if a name came through or what it was that kind of helps cement the floor. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden I said to her, who's the J-O name? And before I could say anything, she said, she blurted out, could that be John? And I'm like, yeah, it could be John, that's a J-O name. And she said, that's my dad. And as soon as she did that, the next phrase out of my mouth was, do you know why I would have a suicide in your family? And then she started crying. And she said, it's never been, the police were never able to ascertain if he did or didn't. There's a lot of speculation. Her dad came through and brought her a lot of healing that night. I just happened to write about it in the book. And I think she's a local lady. Um, all I know is her first name was Melissa. So uh, I don't know her last name, but uh, that story might interest you because it happened here in this hall. So is there any questions just before? I'm going to try to launch into readings, hopefully, and we can get going because I don't have a lot of time. Uh, I want to explain a few things to you. If I get pulled to you, or if I come to you, or if I let, I'm, I'm very much like I'm working at Pearson Airport guiding in planes when I do this, because I'm locked in here or here. Doing that, um, you're not going to shake me. You might think, God, people know me here, I'm not going to speak up. Well, then you shouldn't have come. <laughs> That's the point of the truth. Because people like you annoy me, and you annoy Suzanne, because we're here not to prove anything to you. We're here working for the other side. And they get annoyed, I get really annoyed, and, and uh, I, I just don't want you wasting time if you do think 
things for you. And there could be things that maybe throw you off and you're not sure. Let me rule it out because I'm really good at that where I'll say, no, I'm not with you. I get pulled here. Or, you know, because the opposite of that are the people that want to steal everybody because they want it so badly. <laughs> they, just, they just want it so badly. So they're like, if I talked about a three-legged dog, they'll tell me they had a two-legged cat. <laughs> I think I can tell the difference. So uh, just bear with me. All I require from you is a yes or a no. Yes, if you understand what I'm saying to you. No, if you don't. If um, I make reference to names, you probably will hear Suzanne tell you this quickly when she comes out. Names can be for both deceased and living people because deceased people come through acknowledging living people by name. Uh, whether you get a lot of names or a few names, sometimes the names can really lock a person in, but usually it's the details and the personalities and the things that come up. And watch for them to talk about current things. I just uh, came off two days of taping for season three of my TV show, Thursday and Friday. We've got six episodes in. And um, I couldn't believe how many current things came up in those readings that had just happened, like that week, the night before, conversations that they had, and some very specific things too. So watch, because spirits, that's their way of letting you know they're still in your life. It's not something you're thinking of, and it could be pretty mundane. It could be really mundane. And you think, why would he talk about that, or why would she bring that up? I don't know. Because I think you can choose where you can it from. It may not be who you want. And it could be that mother-in-law you hated. It could, be, it could be the drunk neighbor that, you know, peed on your rose bush down there every day. I can't pick who's coming through to you. So that's the simple truth of it. Uh, if I talk about older or above and I indicate two levels, this is much better standing here. Uh, two levels above you, it means that I would have a grandmother, grandfather, great aunt, or great uncle coming through. If I talked about one level above you, that means that I'm at your parental level. It does not isolate me just to your mom or dad, because there's no distinction for me between biological uh, step or in-laws or ex-in-laws. A couple weeks ago, I had a woman in my office. We started out with her mom coming through. The next thing I knew, I had her ex-mother-in-law coming through. And then the third thing I had was her present husband's mother coming through, who she had never met. So there was three moms. It got a little confusing at times. They were very clear about uh, how they died and, and certain details, but it got confusing which one was saying what, and then she had to come to terms with that later with her recording and figure it out. But there's no, I can't say, oh, it's your biological mom or your stepmom or dad or whatever it is. So just bear with me as I deal with the levels. To your side or at your level means that I have somebody coming through with your generation. It could be that, um, I have a significant other, I could have a brother, sister, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, cousin, or friend coming through. And if I go below you or younger, I only go one level below, but grandchildren can come in there too. It just means that I've got a younger generation coming through. It could be a, a son or daughter, son and daughter-in-law, niece or nephews. The crazy part for people is, and it's happened at these kinds of venues before, where um, they don't get their loved one coming through. They actually get their best friend's mother coming through, or the co-worker's brother who died six months ago, or you know whatever that is. And you think, wow, I'm here for my family, and I've got to relay messages to a friend. That's, that can be very common in the reading, so be aware of that. Stick to the yeses or the noes. There's going to be two cordless mics that will be coming around to you. And uh, does anybody have any questions? No? So before I ever came on stage, about five minutes before, uh, when I was just back behind the curtains, there was uh, a female grabbing my attention, and I felt like I was going to be locked right in here. I don't know if I'm in the middle. Um, so there's a lot of empty seats right there. But I felt like I would be on this side for some reason, and I didn't feel like I'm going to the back of the hall. I need to talk about, and I, when I say this, I felt young, or she would, uh, what I'm classifying as younger, below. 
um, the person this would be for. But cancer was coming through, and there's a CA sounding name that they want me to bring up with this, so I didn't know if there's like a, a Cali, a Carly, or a Cam, or what this is, but it was a CA hard C name that they were bringing up. And, and I felt like I'm right like here. So does somebody understand that? I'm, my last name's Char. I don't know. It's a hard sound to me. Char. I'm not convinced I'm that far back, yeah. to be honest with you. Do you have, have a connection to a younger female with past oh. cancer? No. Yeah, so it's not just the main thing that's going to lock me in on it. Um, I have a, I can like literally, do you two understand this? Because I don't have much time, not like a normal event. We're trying to decide. <laughs> I'm vibrating like crazy. You're vibrating? Yeah. What's in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> I used to have one of those stores.
Because why do I feel like I don't know if you're not happy? I don't know if it's... No, that's Carrie. We both know I need, but she's got the bullshit at work. <laughs> Major? Major? Can I tell you that I think part of the problem is that you either don't stick to your guns on something and then like give in or end up, I, like I don't know, I can't pretend to know what you do or what the workplace is like and maybe you'll be fired if you don't, but I feel like there's something about you not sticking to your guns in the way that she's bringing it through. Can I also ask you, did something, did one of these ladies, like even though the younger one, still lady, did, did the cancer travel to the brain? Yes. Because they just want me to talk about the brain now, like the brain tumor. Yeah. Okay. Starting our spine went through the brain. Am I talking to 16 year old that passed? Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't get that earlier. I, and I need to. I think they did. Holy crap, so then they're like tag team. This is where it gets hard to, <coughs> to differentiate who's who then. And kind of public pay, and do people know you here? I really don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, really don't know care. That. There's an issue that I, I think the male's still living, but alcohol being problematic or influential on other people in a negative way that comes up around you, Carrie. So just remember that I'm saying it, but this male's living and would have the alcohol, alcoholic issue where I feel like it becomes problematic. And I feel like the male's still living, it's not a deceased person. Where does uh, the names things? I'm surprised they're getting so readily. Jerry or Gary or why would I get the JR or the GR sound? I have a cousin, Gary. Does he drink? Not that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> and I know of. I'm still doing that. I just, it just threw my cup too Sorry. close. Um, I don't know why, but I feel like there's a GR or JR connection that they want me to talk about. And his mom passed? Nope. I've got a female that passed in the hospital bed. It's a whole declining thing. It's not the cancer people. It's not, it's an older female coming through. H. H. So just think about this when I say Ellen. <laughs> there's a lung. There's like collapsed lung or there's blackness in the lung that they're bringing up for the older female. I feel like the food in the lung is the big thing that they're bringing up for her. Older. Is this on mom's side of the family or no? That's mom's side, yeah. Because I feel like I'm so close to mom or connected to mom for some reason. Yeah, I don't believe it for her. Okay. And I have oh God, that's a big tricky part. I don't know if it's the Eileen or the other 16 year old that died from cancer. But I'm going to tell you, there's an issue where people were mad or upset with a male that was connected to her because of behavior or the way that he acted around the time leading up to the passing and then after. So I don't know if you know Eileen's family or this other girl's family, but there's something where there was like judgment about the living male, whether I don't know if it's a husband or what, but it's definitely a male. And I, and I feel like people felt like you didn't deal with it well and acted not well because of that. You don't see that? Could be. I don't know if I'm being pulled or moved. I just had an impact in a vehicle come through and I don't feel like I'm necessarily with you two with this. I literally feel like it's either like a hydro pole or a tree or something. You get it? Okay. Sorry, and if I'm saying anything more that could be Eileen or the 16 year old, let me know. But I just felt like the energy had just transferred or changed. Funny you're right behind me, too. What do you understand? Um, the loss, just speaking to my. A vehicle place? Tree or hydro pole, there's something that's like a vertical thing that I feel like we have to Like a tanker truck, maybe? Mm -hmm. Listen, it'd be easy to run with that, but I'm not sure because you're ready to pass that mic off, aren't you? Yeah. You just keep holding there. Okay. 
Does anybody else understand why I would have the impact, the tree, or hydropole? There's something vertical in the structure. Uh -oh. Sorry. Yeah, you you understand? I had an uncle that died decapitated. He had a hydropole. It's got to be hydropolar tree because it's wood and it's vertical. Crazy to be in my head. But I, I want to be that three-legged cat lady. <laughs> <laughs> you stand up and let me judge you. Know, you're like, you let me do the, the judging on it. You stay up just in case, okay? Um, can I ask Dennis or Dennis? There's a DN that they want me to acknowledge. Don't think just deceased. But there will be some reason why they're bringing up the DN name. Donnie? It's possible. DN. DN. Donnie. Is this tied to or connected in any way? It's in front of the family. Okay. Because the guy or the person that hit the hydro or tree wants me to talk about the DN connection. Um, there's, uh, I'm, this is not about your uncle, even if this is true or factual. There's something else he wants me to talk about. There's a, a substance issue that uh, I feel like, I don't know if you help the person. Um, there's something about where I feel like I gotta talk about substance stuff, and somehow, like, I don't know if we're past it, but I feel like there's some form of improvement. So, like, what do you understand? Is it nodding, but then? Um, I separated from my ex. He was addicted to marijuana. Okay. Did you try to help him? I can only assume that yeah. you were a, a partner. Yeah. I know he's bringing up about the person and the addiction or the substance issue. And, uh, but I felt like there was, you had tried to help. I do think something is, and, and whether you know this, whether you can find this out later, I think something's improving or has improved. So I don't know if you're still in the same circles or know people that know, or you can check up on them, because maybe you're friendly, I don't know. But I feel like there's something that has changed or shifted in a more positive way for him. And is your mom living? Yes. Do you not talk to her? No, we talk to her. Is there a reason why we talk about a mother figure that you don't talk to that... Because I really feel like a very agitated, pulled apart connection. Not my mom and I super close. I get that. Is there a mom that I'm going to see because I can't isolate genetics, steps, and in-laws? His, his family hates me. <laughs> they hate you, but he has a problem. Yeah. What's the thing like with the mother? She hates me. <laughs> That's sad. It really is. I don't know what went under the bridge, and I don't know all the details, but I have a person acknowledging this like dissension, this divided thing with the mother figure. So, what's your first name? Courtney. Courtney. You probably weren't anticipating hearing from the uncle or the uncle to get me there. You have the first name of one individual, nothing else that you were hoping to hear from tonight. Art. Art. Art? Oh, don't tell me the story. <laughs> Just the name and no other details. I thought I was friggin' clear. <laughs> You're nervous, I'll give you that. Um, so bear with me to see if, if I'm going to get your dad or Art, now that you told me it's your dad. Um, I do want to ask you a question, though, if there was... How do I work this? And then it's no guarantee that I have Art. That's the first thing that I need to say. But as soon as you say it, even in my private practice, I go with the first things that I get. More times than not, it turns out to be the person. Sometimes it's not. Do you know why there was... He shows me, first of all, I see a scenario that's hospital-based. That's the first thing that I need to say. So I don't know how your dad dies, I'm not asking. So it may not be him, but I've got to tell you that I have a scenario where I'm seeing the person in the hospital. I think everything's exhausted that can be done for him. And I feel like somebody won't give up on it or they won't, they, they don't agree with the decision like we can't do any more. Do you understand? I know it's not art then because you're shaking no. You know why I would get that from you. 
Well, hence the mother thing. Thinning hair for him? My dad? <laughs> oh, no. You mean this man? <laughs> well, that's obvious. <laughs> I kid. Um, you got good hair. You got Kenny Rogers hair. Um, no, what would be the joke about him or you? There's a joke? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's all I care. Yeah. Yeah. That's a joke. He's yeah. laughing, but something with the hair yeah. Yeah. aspect. And not for him, but the bike or a bike or the like the motorbike or something. I don't feel like it's for him. I don't feel like he's talking about his motorbike. Yeah. Matt, our neighbor has the bike. Yeah. Is this somebody he knew or yeah. knew well or yeah. would try to include? Because yeah. I knew he wasn't saying he owned the bike, but he's acknowledging the person that does. I, I don't know how I can be more clear about this. 
he is so not okay with the way you were treated after he dies. There's just no way I can buffer that. You didn't deserve it. You didn't, you didn't deserve it. You, you didn't do something that caused it. And he's not okay with it. But he can't do a damn thing about it. But he is aware of it. He is aware of it. And who turned on you? I don't say the whole family. The whole family. No, but that's not what I'm saying. His mother. There's a female sister. Because there's a female that he makes me feel like close, light, we were good, and then I felt like a turn. It's like you got night. Bitch. <laughs> However, I don't know where they're coming from. But I do trust him when he says you didn't deserve it. I really do believe that. Don't get all freaked out on me when I tell you this. Have you had any glandular issues in your throat? That's what I know of. You would know. I'm going to tell you, watch. This is not for you to get all freaked out and start checking every morning and night. I don't feel like, honestly, it, when people hear that, you might think the big C, the big C. It's not. It's not like that. But I think it's something that you're going to need checked, or there's something in the throat region that could be swollen or enlarged or something. But you're not aware of that, right? Okay. Just because he's, he's kind of giving you a heads up about this, I think, is the feeling. We just passed a birthday or the anniversary of something. Like, it doesn't feel like we're too far past it. I don't know either. I've never met you. So you got to work and play with me. How far? Uh, in June. 15. Oh, my God. Does it get any clearer than that? Because he wants me to acknowledge the birthday we just passed. Guess what he's saying? Happy birthday. I guess. You know, it's easy for me to stand here and say he still loves you. I swear to God he does. Or he wouldn't come through. You, um, not because of his death, you went through a, you okay? I see you trembling big time. Um, you went through a real insecurity aspect with yourself. And, you know, his death might have triggered it, I don't know, but you really, the foundation... And it isn't just about his death or where you find yourself after it. You had an insecurity about you, and he, he didn't like that. It's like people really rocked you. And you can't believe that. you got to know who you are. Okay? What's a butterfly thing that he would bring up? Ladybugs, maybe? Um, well, one more thing, though. Is there a tattoo connection? Uh, yeah, I got a struck tattoo in my life. You've got what? His truck that he was driving. His truck. That you've got his truck on your leg? <laughs> well, your next husband will love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, he'll have to deal with it if he loves it. Why do I feel like I'm talking butterfly or something that flies insect based that would be significant? Because he brought up that and then he brought up the tattoo thing. Sure. I don't know if it's two separate things. What would be the thing about on the back or somebody's marking? You don't know? Okay. There's a tattoo on the back. Get you stand up, turn around, and move that freaking hair. Yeah. Oh, they're all a vehicle in play. I, I honestly I didn't see it. I didn't walk behind you. I didn't move down there. I guess I went there. People might think I saw it. I didn't look at you. Um, but he's making me feel like something about a tattoo back here. So I don't know. It's funny the flags look like wings. <laughs> um, just know he's, he's with you. What's his name? Marshall. Marshall. Is there a mic? I almost said mic. And not because I was hearing Marshall. What would be the new vehicle? I just bought a new truck. Like when's Jeff 
On your birthday? No. <laughs> You got it. You got to introduce humor because you were very emotional, and there's nothing wrong with emotions. And you know, uh, I want you to keep talking, and I want you to know, and I want to see across the board. It's a promise that's too good to be true, and yet every day of my life that I work, they detail this fact and they say this fact. You don't need a medium to have that connection with your loved one. You don't. He comes through for you, not because he likes me, or not because I swear, or not because he likes my style. He's got great taste. But <laughs> the truth of it is, the love, the bonds of love only get stronger after death. So what you think, what you say, and what you feel, I swear to God, he picks up on, and he gets it instantly. So don't ever think you need to go to a meeting for that. Meetings help with validation. They can, in a time of doubt, can help with that. Um, there's many different reasons why you go to a meeting. But I don't want you to feel like after this experience you've got to rush out and try to pull the one to, to get more. Uh, if the need there, you find somebody or it'll, it'll happen, it'll unfold. Okay? Is there any questions? Because I think we're going to Wrapping up my partner. Names real commonly. Please do not just listen to dead people's names because dead people are connected to living people. And I don't know how they're going to come through. Got it? Does that make sense to you? Yes? Yeah. I have a little more? Yes? Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. And one other quick thing here. The hardest job I have, the hardest job that Chris has, is that not everybody in this room is going to get answers. I'm sorry for that, but that's called reality. Yes? And I always tell people to think outside the box because you are in sections of dead people that are connected to people. And you will know if that message is for you. And I know sometimes people are uncomfortable saying anything, but you'll know if it's for you because you'll find that there are parallels in the room if you understand what I'm talking about in terms of everything being about energy. Got that? Are we all with me? All right, cool. Okay, so there's a woman who's standing next to you. Are you guys related? Does that mean you sleep together? Is that the story? <laughs> That's related, baby. Okay, so there's two women who are standing. Is your mom past? Okay, your mom? Yeah, because I can tell why there's one standing next to you. Now, I know these things are awful, but you know what? Everybody on the other side of the room wants to know about your dead people. You know that, right? Yeah. Yes, so I know that this is a hard thing to do. You may have to do this, Julie, because I'm not sure that they're good at this stuff. Okay. So uh, I have to tell you this. One of your moms has been gone a long time. That's yours. Okay. So there's a woman who's coming to attend. Your mother, your grandmother, or there's a couple with another. They have the end name. I don't know who's Mary, Margaret, Marie. It's one of those first or middle names that they're telling me. Now, I don't know if she's here past over. Margaret. Marie, Mary, Margaret. Hello. Who's that? Oh, yeah. Who's Margaret? It's your mom. She connected to your mom? Yes. Okay, did I tell you that there were three women here coming here together? Three. One, two, three. Can you count, darling? Okay, now. So, you are a mother's favorite son, were you? Stars, moon, all that other kind of stuff over your head. Oh, yes, you were. Okay. Now, you were young she best. Yeah, that's why she comes to see you today. That she didn't know her, but she likes her. She did? Okay, as I was say, you better take her out to dinner then if you did. Okay, so it was very short. So then I'm going to ask you this, were you not married? We're not married. Thank you. That's what I mean about not knowing, do you understand? So she said she was at your wedding whether you know that or not. It's very important. Is that your dead dog there? Probably. Okay. I'm not you. Okay. Well, your mother brings your dead dogs in. Okay. There's one that's black that you're very connected to from what they're showing me. That's dusty. That's dusty. Okay, thank you. Now, I'm also going to mention this because when your mom comes in here, she talks about the young female. Would she be talking about a sister or a daughter, please? Sister. Sister. It's older than her, though. Okay. Younger sister would be younger now. Your sister's still here? No, my sister's here. Yes. Okay. So where's the sister that's passed? Is that the aunt? My mom. It's okay. Did she pass before your mom? Okay, there's a distance in there. There's a distance in the passing. 
Okay, so who was ill? Somebody had to be ill, but they're showing ill at the time. Okay, who was March or May for the rest of the passing? Okay, you write that down, okay? And if people like her behind you, you write this down and give it to her because she's already brain down on me. Now, I'm just going to ask you, they were very different but very close. The one's passing was very different than the other. It's almost like they planned this. Do you understand this? So I'm going to ask you this question. Am I physically distant? Am I most? There's a, there's a distancing somewhere here. Okay, so that's the way they let me know you're coming through here. You must have been a favorite niece or a favorite daughter because they're being a very big deal about this. Do you understand this? Yes, so I'm also going to ask this, mom's mom's also passed? There's a distance in there as well. There's a December-January connection on that side. Yes, now isn't daddy also passed? Yes, did he go before them? No. He went after? Yeah. Who's the J name? Is it Jack or is it John or James? Yeah, James. James. See, I know I got the right dead people here. There's nothing wrong with the dead people. It's always the little people that make me crazy. Now, I'm just going to quickly ask you this. They're also telling me there's a younger man. So there must have been a son that they're talking about. Did you have a brother? Uh, I have brothers. You have brothers. Would they be your mother's parents, sons? <laughs> you understand that, yes? Sons are usually connected under there. So are they all still here living? I just want to know. Now, your mother's giving me four. Are you one of four or the four more? You see, there's nothing wrong with these dead people here. Okay. Now, I, I know that sometimes the Canadian people can be a little slow, but I work with you. You see this, right? I'll beat it out of you if you don't come with that. Um, so I'm going to ask you this question. I want to know who's really religious or passed the cross down. Who's Somebody's religious or passed the cross down. There's a woman standing between the two of you holding her cross. Okay, but who has somebody's cross? Oh, I have my own cross. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand that this is about me? Okay, so. Because that's what she's showing me. Now, she's going to tell me one other quick thing here. Who lived in what I would call the larger house, please? You did. Okay, so that was your mama then? That was her life. She had the bigger house. Okay, so I'm going to ask this. Was this house left after she passed? For a long time. Okay, so she's telling me the house was a big deal. So I'm going to take that to be quite literal. Do you understand this? It had to be a big deal with you and the siblings and everybody that was here. Yes? So I want to know who was the pain in the rear? Ask her. She'll know. Okay. Because I'm definitely getting what I would call difficulty. It's not a nasty thing or anything. It's just, you understand, it's just a process. Because I'm getting that they're cool with this. And I feel like you need to be cool with this. Do you understand this? So it's quite, quite a big deal. Now, this is a strange thing here because standing next to you are some dead dogs, but I'm either with you or I'm on this side because somebody must have also had horses because I smell them. So who had the horses? My parents and I have horses. You have horses also. You have horses too? Your sister did. Okay. Do you know if any of them are dead? Okay, because the, the, these are dead horses that are lying here. So your sister also had horses? Yes, okay, thank you. So this is the dead horse section. <laughs> but before I talk about your horses, I did one other thing to have tested. Were you, you weren't with your mom when she passed, were you? Um, pretty close to a couple days. Okay, so, let, 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 she, she was in a coma, right? Okay, because she's telling me there, but not there, which indicates to me there, but not where. Do you understand? And two levels of consciousness. That's a very big deal. She brings that into me. Because she says she wants you to know she was aware you were there even if you didn't think she was. Good. Because it's her validation to you. And if you know that, that's a big deal. Yes? That's pretty cool. Okay. Uh, I have one other quick thing that I have to say. And I think I might be back here with you here. I'm also hearing a P name. There's a Peter or there's a Pat or there's a Paul. And I think I'm with this section over here. You have a brother Paul. Okay, so that's your parents are coming in with the horse. Okay, so is he still here? Yeah. Okay, here is living with me. Now, um, I'm just going to, did both parents pass? Yes. Did your daddy go first? Yes. There's a long distance in their passing. Um, no, a year and a half. Okay, then somebody had to be ill. Yes. 
Was he the one who was ill for a long time? Yes. Yes, because that's, if illness is when the thing starts, that's how I see it in terms of time. Do you do understand this? Yes. Okay, so Peter is the brother. Paul. Paul, I'm sorry. My brother. Okay, but who's Robert? Robert? Yes. My ex-husband. Is he dead? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 